Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, I hope to get a little, cute little lander on the moon in a location, in a biome that we haven't been to before. And this is the lander, it has the seismometer, uh, no barometer, thermometer and uh, gravioli detector. And it's got one of the SNAP RTGs, and some solar panelry, and of course communications. And that's it. Uh, it alone has 3,300 delta V, but some of that will be taken up by the RCS system, perhaps, uh, depending on how much maneuvering we have to do. But uh, it's about 1.5 tons altogether that we're going to be trying to land on the moon. And then this is its uh, lunar transfer stage using the SS engine, which I love, of course. And so it's got 3,400 delta V. Uh, that assembly altogether is about 5 tons, which is pretty light when you think about it. Now, what my goal was for this uh, episode was to uh, try out the Mitsubishi LE-7A launch engines and uh, launch out of Tanegashima, Japan. And, well, there, there are a few things about that. First of all, uh, I, these are good engines. Uh, we get a set of two. We don't have uh, them individually, unfortunately. But then again, the... H-2B rocket uh, uses a pair of them on its first stage, so I guess that was logic. And it has a thrust that's about in between the the Buran uh, core stage and uh, space shuttle main engines. So it's got a thrust about in the middle there. Uh, its ISP is less than those two, but still better than any other uh, rocket in terms of, I mean, it's uh, it's a good uh, hydrogen oxygen rocket, basically is what you've got in terms of your, your ISP there, and uh, plenty of gimbal range. So that's what we're dealing with. It's a rather large rocket though, five meters, and so the problem was that I did not have the equivalent uh, second stage rocket for the Japanese rocket, uh, the Mitsubishi Le Five A. LE-5A I think it is. Uh, so I don't have that. So what I decided to use was actually the EADS Astrium HM-7B which is uh, much lower in thrust. It does have a slightly better vacuum ISP uh, than the LE-7A at least. And uh, But the low thrust uh, complicated matters because it really can't lift too much. Even this 5 ton payload is a lot for it. And so you can see right here the thrust weight ratio is very low at this stage and it burns for eight minutes which is uh, a little bit rough. Now I could have uh, had it burn for less but then it would hardly be useful but the reason I needed a second stage was because, uh, let, let me put this all back together and you'll see the real stats and we need to make sure that the staging is correct of course um, the reason is that otherwise the thrust weight ratio on the on the first stage would go too high. If I don't have a second stage here, then the thrust weight ratio on the first stage, once we reach orbit, it could uh, take us all the way into orbit uh, as long as it has some uh, rocket boosters to give it a good start at the beginning. But uh, the problem is that by the time we got to orbit, we'd be uh, pushing 10 Gs. And even this right now uh, goes with 7 Gs, which is pretty high. Um, and we can't throttle this engine. This engine has no throttleability. So that's a problem. Uh, we're going to have a high G liftoff as well because I'm using these uh, Castor IVA uh, saw rocket boosters. I could have used a procedural uh, saw rocket booster, but I hate the nozzles on them. I mean, literally, that was the only thing that was causing uh, causing me to not use these procedural real fuels SRBs. The nozzle uh, ended up being this tiny little embarrassing thing, so I didn't like the look of that, so I just abandoned that idea. So we're going to have plenty of thrust at liftoff. I I wonder if it's possible to just not light this one. No, we do have to light it. So they don't have enough thrust to uh, justify not lighting the the center rocket. Gotta put some bracing here, I think. 
Oh, I'm gonna need more symmetry than that. So yeah, uh, we're gonna have uh, 1.8 thrust to weight ratio at liftoff, which is very high for one of my liftoffs. But uh, we're pretty much gonna have high delta V all the way through the first stage, and then uh, once we hit the second stage, it's gonna be like uh, snooze time. So we'll try this out. I'm not too sure it'll work. I've named the uh, the rocket Mani, which is the Norse god of the moon, appropriately enough, since this is going to be a moon probe. And I've named the probe itself Miyazaki. I've been naming it after sci-fi authors, but uh, and Miyazaki is, of course, uh, the writer of uh, and director of some brilliant anime, uh, usually fantasy-ish. But I decided that it was appropriate. Well, we're launching out of Japan, so why not? And uh, I have great respect for his work. So there we are. Anyway, uh, let's uh, get on with it and hope that this new rocket, completely new rocket, uh, works out for the best and doesn't fall apart. It's a pretty light rocket, and again, it's delivering one point. It can deliver probably two tons to the moon. Anyway, we'll see how it works out. So out to the launch pad. Huh? The rockets always look so good in the VAB, and then they look so fat on the launch pad. Of course, with the 5 meter diameter engines, I can hardly do anything more. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get our inclination. I want to minimize the inclination of the moon. We're probably, I mean, I don't think uh, from this latitude, well, our inclination is not too far off, actually. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna put SAS on and let's time warp until our relative inclination is at a minimum. Hopefully it'll still be daylight. Oh, no such luck. Okay, that's the minimum. 2.03. All systems are go. We have all the electric charge and everything. Okay, uh, throttle up. Now say yes is on. 209 tons. Pretty good if we can get stuff to the moon with this. We shall see. Let's get surface up here. Alright, I upgraded the mech jeb just in case. Anyway, uh, let's go. Okay, good on the main engine. And now release. Ooh, look at that. We could probably get lights on right now. The lights on the probe can show through the the fairing to some degree. Okay, well this is a pretty quick rocket, obviously. We'll see how Fermi Aerospace deals with that. Probably very badly. We'll see. Okay, going to 85. I'm not going to be at all surprised if there's any spin. I'll be surprised if there isn't any. An 80. I'm 75 at uh, 4,500 meters. We're past Mach 1 already. Now keep in mind the second stage is very slow so we do want to gain some altitude and a lot of time to apoapsis prior to the release of the first stage. Well, this is uh, much more stable than uh, the rockets we've been using so far, I think. This is going to be a fun one if this works out. Of course, it's much lighter than the other ones, so that's uh, part of the benefit. Okay. We can't really wait until, uh, well, it looks like we'll be able to wait until nearly zero thrust on these. But uh, with real solid rocket boosters, you uh, release at some arbitrary amount of thrust, like the SRBs on the space shuttle release at 400 kilonewtons. Okay, and I think I can release at five. There we go. 
Okay, well, while I've been doing that, I've been neglecting my pitch program. Wow, excellent rocket so far. Again, uh, probably the benefit of not having such a heavy rocket. The game handles it much better. The heavier the rocket, the worse off things are. It's not really the number of parts that matters, uh, actually. I mean, at least from my experience with these uh, procedural parts rockets, because I, I can size a tank to whatever, and the larger the tank, the worse off the physics ends up being. Okay, I think we are go for fairing release. And that happens in the classic way, without much actual release going on. <sighs> That's a problem. Special problem since I forgot to get the antenna grouped, so I have to peek in here. Where is my antenna? I think I might as well just uh, activate the main dish if I can't see anything else. Uh, come on. Ah! Show me the antenna. Okay, uh, that's interesting. That's the thermometer. Uh, okay, where are you, antenna? My fault for not action grouping it, of course, but still. Okay, well, that's the always on one. Somewhere over here. How do I get to that one? Okay, are we going crazy here? Hold on. Uh, okay, this is not what I wanted to do. Hunting for the antenna, I have allowed my apoapsis to go all over the place. And of course our g-forces are high at this point, so... It's not shaking itself apart. That's a good thing. Okay, well, 540 kilometers or thereabouts. The camera is all over the place. Okay, let's uh, separate the first stage such as it is and yeah we're gonna need the time actually because this stage burns for eight minutes so let's uh, let's give it a light okay now the fairings clear well at least one fairing clears away and no this is not all right for those who uh, are wondering but uh, at least I can get to the antenna that makes me happy. Yes, this is inefficient, and of course, so is the crazy apoapsis, but I've got the fuel for it. This has plenty of margin. It's meant to carry, uh, carry heavier loads anyway. Well, if you want to put something into a somewhat higher orbit, this seems like the rocket of choice. I wonder why it deviates so much away before it finally settles to the right heading. So yeah, uh, this fairing being there is not part of the plan, but there's nothing I can do about it. It's not something I can control. For those who uh, didn't notice, this is the tank for this engine. So the engine is huge compared to the tank that's feeding it. It's one of those weird things. Even though this is a low density fuel, you know, with hydrogen and all, the actual engine burns so slowly because it's got low thrust, right? It's only got 65 kilonewtons, so it's not got burned the fuel very fast, that the tank is very small. wonder why, I mean, is the Astrium HM7B really this big? 
I don't know myself, but it would seem very odd. Does it have relights? No. One ignition only. Otherwise, I'd definitely shut it down and coast for a while before igniting it again. Okay, here we go. Coming close to shutoff time. So it's going to take a little bit longer than usual. I think uh, this rocket might be tasked for geosync missions, <laughs> considering how well it uh, seems to end up at an enormously high apoapsis. Uh, no, our apoapsis is on the wrong side anyway. Okay, uh, that's enough. So, I mean, it uh, really doesn't matter. Even if I had tried to keep my periapsis low, it wouldn't have done any good because it'd be on the wrong side. Okay, so let's uh, release that uh, second stage. Okay, fairing finally falling away. And now, let us try to continue with our moon mission. I want to try for about a 45 degree angle approach to the moon, and that's because I want to hit places that we haven't hit before. Uh, so that probably means hitting latitudes that we haven't hit before. So no equatorial. Polar probably isn't necessary either. Okay, I've got uh, two burns plotted. Uh, the second one will probably be something I'll adjust later. Okay, so as dawn approaches, we should probably start this burn, I think. I forget, what's the burn time on this stage? Um, 5 minutes 44 seconds. Yeah. Uh, now would be a good time. Okay. Engine lit. SS engine doing what it does. So this has been sort of a combination Japanese plus European mission. And I'll see you at the end of this burn. Okay, let's see how close we are. Could do a little bit more. Whoa, okay, that was quick. Alright, uh, let me adjust the mid... Well, it's not really mid-course plane change, it's sort of a, a very quick plane change here. And let's see what we can do with that. And so, over the Pacific Ocean, South Pacific, I think. We begin this adjustment burn. Okay, 700 kilometers. I'm gonna take that and actually I'm gonna switch off the lights. We don't really need that while heading in transit and that gives us 22 days of battery life. The one RTG isn't enough to supply all the electricity for this. Uh, so yeah, could turn off one of the antennae, but 22 days is good enough. Our marvelous remote tech constellation and all of its all of its glorious connections. So, one way or another, it looks like we've maintained communication all the way through our transit to the moon. That's quite encouraging. Okay, lunar sphere of influence. We seem to be coming in a lot more polar than I thought we would be. I am going to correct that because I don't think uh, we're going to be hitting too many new biomes if we do that. Okay, and now uh, plotting for orbit. No, no. 
We really should send another Kerbal over at some point. Maybe we should add, uh, start at thinking about establishing a base. Of course, we don't even have a Earth station yet. Sort of depends on the stability of this save. You can see how much is going on. I don't even have debris selected, but uh, we've got so much going on in orbit around, even around the moon right now. Okay, that's good. Uh, so then uh, after we get into orbit, we'll burn that periapsis to drop our apoapsis into a landing site of some sort, probably. So we need to be able to scout out possible landing sites. We don't need rendezvous anymore. What we need is surface info. Uh, but that surface info does not have... Let's see, landing? Yeah, landing has biome. That's what I want. Okay, so our probe has reached the vicinity of the moon, which, which is always good. So we're over to Midlands right now. I want to see if we hit something interesting. Uh, the problem is the surface features of the moon that we can see don't actually match up with the biomes anymore. At least I don't think so. Well, Highlands we haven't done yet, I don't think, have we? I'd like I'll, I'd like a crater though. Okay, we've passed our maneuver node and we're back on Midlands, unfortunately. But anyway, let's expend this stage and on to the next stage. It looks like we're going to have a little bit less fuel than I'd normally like for landing on the moon. We'll see how that works out. I usually like 2,600 meters per second. Okay, so we'll cut it there. Still haven't seen any new biomes yet. I wonder if we have a biome sensitive scan set of some kind. It'd be in polar orbit, if anything. Well, it's just Luna. I don't think so. We need to send a scan sat that can... Moon pole sat. Let me just switch to that for a sec. Nope, uh, Loon pole sat is just a normal communication satellite. No, no scan sat capabilities here. Okay, so that's that answer. The only other thing in uh, polar orbit is... well no, uh, that's... but I doubt I'd put a ScanSat mission on the same thing as... I think these are both the same uh, type of satellite. So I don't think I have a ScanSat mission anywhere. Alright, back to Miyazaki. Okay, so we're gonna have to find some biomes the hard way. East Crater, hold on. Um, can I remember what this looks like? Uh, okay. Hmm. So right over here is East Crater. Right. Okay, something like that should do. Alright, so we're all plot plotted up, if you will. Still a lot of burning, and we're not going to have much fuel margin for actually sitting down. Okay, that's enough of that. Getting pretty tight on fuel. Okay, I think we can begin our main descent burn now of which this is just the beginning. Okay, we're at East Crater, so any time here we can set down, so let's just go for it. It's 
It's gonna be a steep descent. Okay, we're going pretty good so far. 15 kilometers above the surface, certainly not skimming low like uh, the Apollo moon landings, but so far reasonably efficient. Okay, we are on final descent, 5 kilometers above the surface. Uh, kill the rest of the horizontal velocity here. Okay, 300 meters. Fifty meters. Twenty meters. Wow, lots of horizontal. But we're on the surface, at the east crater, on a slope. No wonder there was a lot of horizontal. Okay. And yes, we have made it. Let us log temperature. Send that information back. Log seismic data. And once it's uh, read 100% on the thermometer reading, I will send the seismic data. The probe core is not meant for the moon, so we don't have any particular experiments like that. I don't think those were biome dependent anyway. Barely had enough fuel the way I land. Okay, that's done. Upload the seismic data. Let me just check the thermometer to see if we actually got everything from there. Uh, no, we didn't. We got some more left over. Okay, so accumulating science here. Though it doesn't seem to be reading any of our other stats. Time warping does not help upload data in realism overhaul apparently. So no time warping just doesn't have any effect. So I'm just sitting here waiting. Still uploading seismic data. I'm not too sure I understand the purpose of making it tedious but let's actually see if there's anything left on the... Yeah, there is. There's still 30 signs. So not only does it go slow, it also doesn't do all the signs. Great. Still a little bit of science here, and since I don't plan on returning to the East Crater soon, I need to send that out as well. Gonna need a lot more science. Uh, I've, in the previous episode I was talking about unlocking Kethane and uh, the tricky thing with that is that uh, that Kethane 
technology that we would unlock first doesn't include the converter so it's completely useless so probably the converter is going to cost another thousand on top of that so really what we're looking at is we need about 1500 science to start cathane production procedures conversion to uh, various fuels I wonder if this version of everything has the fuel I, I think they it does have the fuels configured properly for real fuels so it should be alright not all the fuels mind you uh, only the fuels that are reasonable to be derived from uh, methane like substance okay so I've, I've gotten all the science I can the, the, each one of them has less than two science left I don't know why I can't just upload all the science that they have so for instance the thermometer you can see as 0.6 here and uh, the seismometer but uh, it took so long to upload the data I was literally reading a book while this was going on I had to click them more than once in order to get them going again because they uh, I don't know what they were up to uh, certainly not running out of electric charge but uh, anyway so didn't quite get all the science I would have liked but uh, I mean just a little bit more but it sure took a while anyway point is uh, we got our science from the East Crater and the mission was a wild success uh, considering it was the first launch of a new rocket uh, first launch out of a new launch site and a new probe and everything uh, going to the moon always a little bit difficult so yeah uh, quite impressive altogether and uh, yep from Tanegashima to the moon we managed it and of course there was a little bit of an issue with the way I launched the the first stage uh, went uh, to a very high apoapsis unfortunately while I was hunting for this antenna in particular but uh, that flaw aside I think uh, we can probably tweak things so that it doesn't do that again if we should choose to launch uh, with that rocket again and or maybe we could use it for like I said uh, geosynchronous satellites but anyway uh, mission successful we got uh, I guess a little bit more than 200 science and we have once again landed suc successfully on the moon just barely alright so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time